I think you guys will appreciate something. So I recently came across a definition for the word paradise. Now, all of us are chasing happiness. All of us are bliss junkies. All of us are trying to find our way to nirvana. We're all seeking ecstatic illumination. We're all wanting that moment when the curtain parts and what had never been seen is devoured by the eyes, right? Roland Barthes says it's distinct, abrupt, framed. It is already a memory, right? We have these transformative epiphanies and we mourn them simultaneously because we know that everything is transitory. But nonetheless, we continue our quest for the holy grail. Nonetheless, we want to peek inside of the Ark of the Covenant, even if it kills us. God is in there, remember? The question, of course, is whether we, my friends, are vessels that can contain that divine fluid. Can too much truth actually destroy us? In our search for paradise, we have to curtail the dragon. We have to overcome the chaos. We have to rein it in. And this is the reason why the definition of the word paradise ended up being so interesting when I came across it. Did you know that paradise means walled garden? Now, this is really important. Hear me out, okay? Paradise means walled garden, walled garden, the garden of Eden, right? The walled garden, by definition, toes the line between chaos and order, right? Of course, the, the, the nature, the garden, is chaos. There's predators behind the bush. The chaos could destroy us. The chaos is the unknown. It's the abyss. It's what must not be mentioned, right? But then the wall represents order. The walled garden, by definition, reigns the chaos in. It makes the unknowable knowable, right? It tames nature. It tames the darkness and makes it known, right? It domesticates the darkness. And so the idea that for us, paradise from a biblical, mythological perspective literally means the walled garden points to the yin and yang of the human condition, that we are chaos and order, and that too much of each will destroy us. <laughs> we are that bipolarity, right? We, you know, too much order is oppressive, right? It strangle holds us and can literally stifle the human spirit. You know, those dead souls in their metal coffins that we pray for. You know, the rat race, right? <sighs> Unconsciousness, the default setting, the rat race, the constant gnawing sense of having had and lost some infinite thing. This is too much order. But then too much chaos will tear you apart. Too much chaos is disordered thinking. Too much chaos is madness. Too much chaos is death. Too much chaos is you do get eaten by the lion behind the bush because you weren't being careful. But the walled garden, the walled garden is the best of both worlds. The walled garden is the garden of Eden. You are unselfconscious. The snake hasn't bitten you yet. Because that's the, hmm, that's the punchline slash buzzkill, right? That even in paradise, even when you've reigned in the chaos, even when you've domesticated the darkness, even in paradise, you can get eaten by the snake. And you can get eaten, beaten, <laughs> bitten by the snake the snake represents chaos. The snake represents the fact that chaos insidiously can creep through the pores of the walled garden. That when you lower your guard too much, you could literally get run over by the snake. And so it hints at a faint disquiet that haunts the human animal like nothing else, even when everything is perfect, even when we're living inside of our own waking dream. The possibility of that dream, the possibility of that dream being destroyed, eclipsed by entropy, disorder, and death, continues to <sighs> haunt us with this existential bummer. See, eating from the tree of knowledge awakened us to our self-consciousness and made us realize that even in the walled garden, we will still grow old and die. And so we continue to struggle with it and the source of our ill and our existential dread and our despair and the quiet lives of desperation that we all secretly kind of are bearing with is an ongoing battle. But I have faith that we are going to reverse engineer this baby. We're going to hack our own brains. We're going to become paradise engineers. We're going to overcome and triumph over entropy. Our creativity will transcend all of our limitations, and we will win.
we will win. We will stabilize our paradise. And we will bliss fuck ourselves into mind body states and gradients of bliss that we had never even conceived of. Let's never forget we are cosmic revolutionaries, not stooges conscripted to advance a natural order that kills everyone. So I insist fight for paradise, be a paradise engineer. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought after I came across that definition of paradise. Thoughts of the day. <laughs>